All right, uh, welcome back. We're here now in our further options section. So we've gone over styling a little bit on all these different pieces. We've gone over a little bit of data manipulation, although that is a whole ocean of its own. Um, and now you're probably feeling fairly comfortable moving around between styles, uh, tile sets, and to some degree data sets. We're actually going to make a little bit of a data set just to mess around here with some uh, new, new kind of stuff for ourselves. Uh, we're going to do it in a couple ways. So in further options, we're just exploring a few more kind of different ways that you could do things in Mapbox, and especially a couple options we didn't touch on before. Uh, we could do more careful polishing of the zoom levels, although I think that that might be redundant at this point. But that's typically what you do at this point in a project, is very tightly style everything and try to just you know get right into the options to, to explore them all, all the little options I didn't go into. Um, we're not going to go over all those tiny options, um, but we are going to go over a couple more big things. Um, obviously, the interface of breakpoints has been a little challenging, and there will be a lot of changes coming with Mapbox. I notice they have a lot of updates regularly, so this course may go out of date um, relatively fast. Of course, I hope it doesn't, but I hope that the fundamentals of Mapbox are I'm pretty sure that they're going to stick with the same kind of general um, structure and architecture that they have going on so the fundamentals of styling these different layers is going to uh, make sense and this is all going to set us up very well for understanding everything that's going to come on in Mapbox GLJS where we're also working with all this stuff from Mapbox itself um, but we're we have to manipulate it in code so having gone through it m helps it make some sense because it's very confusing at first so a lot of the terminology that we see here is also terminology we're going to run into in Mapbox GLJS, since it's also a layer-based system. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a data set with some different properties that we're going to be able to kind of filter uh, so we can, t we can separate out how we style different layers and things like that. So we could do this a couple ways. We could do this in uh, Mapbox uh, itself. We could do this in GeoJSON.io. We could do this in a bunch of different tools. Um, in this case, let's just get right into the data set thing. We haven't seriously used it very much, so why don't we do that? Um, we're going to make one for the course. We're going to just, uh, I'm going to make a one with a couple different types of features. So I'm going to put some points. Point here, point here, point here. I'm going to make a line. And I'm also going to make a few polygons. So you can do the same. You should get used to using this kind of interface because you may want to um, build some information like this in the future or at least manipulate it. So you can come in here and you can click on any of these and then change them. If you click on them, you can see these little points are added in between. You can add more information. It's fairly straightforward. Okay, so that's all very nice, but I want to be able to do some stuff with these and separate them out as different chunks of data that I'll style differently. For instance, in this map we have here, the map that we recreated, these lines are styled differently. They're different layers, but th in this case it makes sense that they would be their own tile sets because they're huge amounts of data, but in this it's like three, four points. Like It might as well just be one GeoJSON, one tile set, and then we just filter it appropriately depending on f like data that's within it. So this same We've done this already, and we did this just by styling. When we styled, we could style by a property, so we could kind of look at, you know, oh, this thing has whatever property, and then uh, style it accordingly. So we're going to look again at that, but we're also going to look that you can actually add it to the map independently as well if you wanted to have a separate layer. And that can be useful in certain cases, just when you're working with different types of, of data. It's up to you which way you want to do it for your projects, but I thought I'd present both. So in this case, in order to separate those out, we need to actually add some properties to the data. So we can add properties here when we just click on one. So one, I'm going to give this uh, size. That's, that's one thing I'm going to do because I want to do some fun stuff with it. So I'm going to give it 10. And we're going to give it a category. And its category is going to be, um, I don't know, shape or what should we call it? Uh, mountain shape. Okay. So its category is mountain shape, 
And there we go. So now I'm going to click on this data, and I'm not going to give this one a size, but I'm going to give it a category, and it's also going to be mountain shape. Oh, there we go. You sometimes have to click a couple times to get them to show up. And these two, I could combine them. All right, so you saw how I did that. I just clicked on one, and then I pressed shift, and I clicked on the other. And then they both selected. And then I can use this icon here to combine multi, uh, you'll actually show with this, and then this combines them into what's called a multi-feature. So it's like uh, multi-points and things like that. So in this case, we can combine them. And then we can add property to both of them. So I'm going to add them both as mountain shape. And I had to do it twice. And um, yeah, we don't need to really do anything else with that. And then we can just uncombine them. And now they're separate again. So, But they both have the category mountain shape. So it makes it easy to edit them both. In this case, this one is um, going to be an island shape. Okay. And we're going to call this one... Uh, we're going to give this one a size, and it's going to be uh, 4, and it's also going to be island shape. Oops, island shape. Okay, and this one we're going to add a size as well, and it's going to be 8, and we're going to give this a category of city shape. It's more kind of, actually it's more like farm, but this one's more like city, but whatever. That's not really important. And there we go. So now we have a bunch of data. We can see it has, as we mouse over, you can see it shows us some of the information. So that's going to let us filter it some interesting ways. And we're going to filter this a number of ways. So whatever data you've added, just save it. You can export it. I'm exporting to a new tile set called Course. It's going to be pretty quick to process because it's a very simple GeoJSON. OK, so it looks like our data got added. So now we're just going to add it to the map. All right, here we go. Loading our sources. Let's zoom out a little. You can see it really is a lot of data. OK. Where is it? Course, right there. So what do we have when we zoom out here? We're going to have a bunch of different chunks of data, and they're kind of vaguely shown here. It's different types of things. And they're all, I have it as a circle type. OK, so I could have it as a fill type, and that gets our, looks, looks like our um, line string gets a little messed up, but our polygons are okay. I could have it as a symbol, in which case it looks like these names kind of show up. These points look fine, but um, polygons are a little weird. Uh, why don't we try adding the symbol? And I just want to have you see kind of what happens here. So our stuff isn't showing anything yet. So we're going to have it show, let's say, um, the category. So we can do it that way. And you can see it actually shows a mountain shape, mountain shape, island shape, blah, blah, blah. It may show it multiple times here, even though we only have uh, one thing, because, there you go, because it's a polygon, actually. And we can't really see that it's actually a polygon. So this is a mess. We don't want this. It might be OK uh, once we have the shapes actually on there if we wanted labels. But at this point, this is just a mess. Mm -hmm.